Hickson, great to have you on the podcast. Thanks for joining me today. Thank you, Ryan. My pleasure. Yeah, I got a copy of your book, The Advanced Copy. I'm honored to, to get a copy of it. And uh, I followed your journey, but pretty inspired and um, uh, entertained as well, if I can say that about your book, because man, the stories that you tell in here and everything that you share is an absolutely incredible journey. I think the guys are really going to enjoy hearing from you today. I hope so, yes, because that's, that's, that's what it is. That's my life. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm really curious. One thing that stood out to me, I, I don't know whether you know or not, but I've been on my own jujitsu path over the past. I, I've been going hard for about two and a half years now. Uh, and one thing that really stood out to me is your take in that uh, jujitsu is not so much physical as it is mental. Can you talk with me about that? Of course. Uh, in the art and the martial arts aspect of it. Uh, Jiu-Jitsu become the, the idea to improve yourself with the elements, with the tools, you, the warrior tools, to become a better, sharper warrior. And, and, and in that kind of arsenal, we have the physical attributes, the training, the practice, the ability, the injuries, the, everything goes with the practice of the uh, high-performance sport. But also we have the tools, the emotional tools, the spiritual tools, which if you don't have connection with them, you become very shallow in terms of, of understanding and performing properly. The way I've been raised in, in, in my growing process in martial arts was to, to become an expert in jiu-jitsu and with that expertise dealing with any fighter any size, any rule, any time. So it's not like preparing yourself for a middleweight uh, division with somebody you, you've been watching tapes. And it's something much more mysterious and much more unpredictable and much more uh, emotional because you don't know if somebody's going to knock your door to fight in a garage. Or, so it was an open challenge. Was, for me, it was a very serious matter of representing the family 100%. So with this being said, being tough, being have the heart, have the physicality, have the competitiveness, this is good, but it's not enough. We have to fulfill also the, the spiritual strength, the, the mental strength, to, act, to have a, a, a complete package in order for you to, to, dealing, to deal with the unpredictable. And for example, Patience is something is a very important thing for the for the for war for a warfare situation. I'm not saying about a, a five minutes round, but if there's no limits, sometimes you have to bet, get patience to cook the guy in slow burn until you'll be able to win the guy because he's 80 pounds, 60 pounds, sometimes heavier than you. So be patient, be emotional control, breathing. Is such a very important tool for you to know how to deal uh, and control your emotions. You know, visualization is another tool which, if you're not visualizing and planning a good strategy in your mind, sometimes you 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 don't have the you, you by visualization you're creating a, a extra experience. You become uh, uh, experimenting. Winning in a 10-second fight, winning in a two-minute fight, winning in a three-hour long fight. And if you keep your mindset, visualization, situations where you can get punched, you get knocked down, but you're still kind of putting guy, fading away, putting the guard. So you have to visualize the worst moments, the, the worst situations in order for you to cope with the unpredictable. So hope, hope is a very important element in order for you to, to cope with the daily warfare situations so you have to believe in yourself and and hope sometimes give you some kind of belief which transcends your desire transcends your possibilities more like in god's hands but if you don't know how to deliver this to god and believe you're going to have an extra energy an extra power uh, you can go over your limits all those are, are kind of mental spiritual elements which have to be part of the the, the endeavor you know the part of the, the venture. And for me, I was born and raised in a situation where 
was much more than just a weight division or a, or a, or a sport with rules. Right. So for me, my growing process was preparing to fight the devil, you know, preparing to, to do what has never been done. And, and, and you have to have the spiritual elements, the physical elements, the mental elements, controlling emotions. So I start to add in breathing, cold, uh, ice, ice cold baths, and, and meditation, and uh, biogenastica, and whatever I can do to, to, you know, big wave surfing, whatever I can do to be calm under pressure and to handle nature and connect myself with the, the elements in a, in a mental, in a spiritual, in a physical way, I will do because it's, it's a way for me to, to, to embrace the whole package in terms of there's nothing left behind. I, I put mm. attention in my, in my mental, in my spiritual, in my physical levels. Because sometimes you need the three, sometimes you have more one than others. Sometimes you're injured, but you still have the belief, so it's still balanced. <laughs> right. Right. You know, I'm interested in the in the term you initially used. You talked about the term warrior. And I believe just in following you and knowing what you're about, you are a warrior in the literal sense. But most men today are never going to find themselves in a combative environment. So how does that warrior archetype or warrior mindset translate over into a guy trying to improve his career or develop in his relationship and take it off the mats to the rest of his life? That's a great question because that's exactly my, my mission today is to become, is to evolve the, the element of martial arts to the point where you have to win a fight without a fight. Mm. You have to win without a fight. So in order for you to do that, because if you're thinking about happiness, we all want to be happy. It doesn't matter if you're a fighter, if you're a lover, if you're a musician, artist, uh, a professor. Whatever you do, you, you, you put yourself in a situation where you, you, you're moving towards happiness. Because you don't want to be stagnant in a position where, oh, I don't know, I don't want to know what I want. Or, you, know, you, know, you don't want to be just without. You want to be with. Mm. So with desire, with happiness, with love, with inspiration, with motivation. And once you achieve something, no matter if you want to get a girlfriend or if you want to buy a car or if you want to buy or if you want to get a new job or if you want to just buy a house. So whatever venture you are in, whatever challenge, that becomes a, not an opponent, but a challenge hmm. who has to be dealing with the peaceful the spiritual warrior mentality. Because the, the warrior is there to win battles. If you, if, you, if you get a girlfriend, somehow you win strategically, mentally, emotionally. You, you get what you want, so you won. So that's a reason for you to get happy. That's a reason for you to, to become in a progressive way. But that girlfriend you get today it's not going to give you the same happiness 10 years from now because now she's your wife or you have kids. So your goal now will be putting the kids in college or, or get a new house. Or, so in order for you to become happy again and consistently happy in your life, you have to follow steps to one day get a girlfriend, the other day get married, the other day get house, the other day get kids and college. So it's always a new step, a new venture, a new challenge. And, and what we have in common based on no matter if you want to get a diploma or no matter if you want to beat somebody on the MMA, UFC, is the challenge that is we have a kind of opponent, we have the strategies to be made, we have the emotional control to be important for you because sometimes you, your enemy today coming through the email, you, have, can, right. you, can have the worst, you can have the worst message in email, and that email will disturb your emotions, will make you cry, will make you get desperate, even be, th be, be, be thinking and suicidal. So know how to breathe when you receive a message. Know how to breathe when you fight. It's so important, no matter if it's just going to cover the emotional aspect of you or if you're going to give you some kind of hyperventilation for you keep going one or two more rounds. 
But breathing is essential for you to be in control of your heart and your brain. Because the brain and the heart are the only organs in the body who are able to give and receive information. Hmm. Sometimes we, you directly affect it in your heart. So you don't know what it is, but you feel emotionally. Right. More sometimes, intuitive, right? Yes. Yeah, sometimes you emotionally involve in your mind, stress, com- confusion. Situ- so, and if you know how to breathe, it's the, the fastest way for you to achieve Im- immediately control over your thinking to calm your, 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 your mind down. Same thing with your heart. You have to have over breathing, a deep control of your heartbeats. And since I started learning breathing with 16 years old, because I was already an athlete, I was already a professional. I'm not a professional, but I was going to become a professional. So I was training like a crazy. I was surfing. I was, do- I was always being an athlete. And after I started learning biogenastica and how to breathe properly, my performance increased in 40%, hmm. solid 40% of better control, better recovery, better understanding of the action when I'm in the confusion because there's more oxygen in the brain and give me more capabilities to be calm, to analyze, to make. So I get a solid 40% improvement in my performance from breathing. And today... My performance reduced to 10% of what I was, but I still have 40% of breathing. So breathing today is my biggest ally to keep me calm, to keep me on, you know, connected with things that are important for me, to be able to regulate my heart, to be able to regulate my stress, because I still have stresses, different ones. But So through the elements of a, a, a perfect practice, a perfect jiu-jitsu practice will extend your practice, not only for you to be able to do a sweep or do an arm lock or a triangle properly, but also to understand yourself when you're under stress and start to breathe properly to, to make this stress not as uncomfortable. You start to learn how to be comfortable in hell. And based on that, you become each more in control of your life no matter if it's to sign a contract, to buy a new car, no matter if it's dealing with a, a, a relationship problem. So whatever it is, jiu-jitsu transcends the mat because it gives you the capacity to check your gauges with mm. much more proper idea. How nervous you are, how emotionally disturbed you are, how tired you are, how uncoordinated. So you start to perceive things in a much complete idea. You know, and you start to become calmer under pressure. You start to become sharper under confusion. You start to become so. Those elements, those are comp- those are completely transcending the the the, the mat area, and take it to, you you immediately take this to life in a much more, you know, uh, it's just comfortable. Is is this why you make the distinction between? opponent and challenge and when you had other men that you were fighting or were challenging you did you view them as an opponent as an adversary or did you view it as a challenge and did the way that you view it change your response to it yes if i see the thing as an opponent i take for the ego and the personal matter Mm. it's more like an egocentric thing you know i don't see the guy who's trying to fight me being personal against me. He's trying to defeat my style. He tried to defeat my abilities. So I try to become frozen ice in terms of being personal and start to talk bad things about the guy or start to see personality problems or why he deserves to get beat or why he did. So I don't analyze that. I try to become more uh, effective in, in the way I perform based on my preparation against the opponent and, or my preparation against the challenge, whatever you, you and, and, and not feeling personal or not feeling emotionally disturbed based on things he said, or I try to, because this is not going to win the fight. This, this is the part which is just going to be uh, a nightmare in my brain. I, I, right. you know, that was telling things, what supposed, so this, I try to be away from me and I try to just keep the thing in a very, uh, 
a very direct way based on how I have to res respond to that kind of challenge. Right. And I have to be effective. I have to be effective and mean. Because sometimes you have a challenge where you supposed just to win the medal. So you want to be gentle. You want to make the guy quit and not get hurt. Sometimes mm. the guy challenge you because you're coming from a family and he disrespect you and he say he cannot believe in your art and he's bad. So rationally, he deserve a punishment instead of being just a defeat. So this guy will be able to hurt him because he deserves to get hurt, not exactly because uh, my mission is to hurt him. It's just because he was, you know, disrespectful or, or, or somehow negative in a way. So it's not easy for me to just choke him out, put him to sleep. And then when he wake up, he still tell the same things again and again because he didn't show hurt. So for this specifically opponent, I will put him to sleep or either before or after, I'm going to punch him in the nose to break his face to just show him, to show everything, show how punished he was based on what he did. So, so you say that, you say that so, so calmly. I, I don't think most people listening would have that same mentality. And you say it so calmly and so matter of factly, I, y your family is one of the only families that I know that uh, cares so deeply about your honor and the family name, where, where does that come from? And that, and that innate desire to have people respect your name and the art itself. This, this is goes beyond my, my, my lifetime, you know, because when I born, I born in an environment where even before I recognize myself, people already recognize me as a future champion, as a, as a part of the family, as one fighter, so maybe the first, before diapers, I get a gi. So the situation was like very natural for me in terms of who I am. When I start to understand who I am, I was already using a gi. I was already mentioned as a Gracie mm. more than Rickson. You know, I was a member of the family. I was a future champion. People putting hopes and expectations on my ability. So I born in an environment where it was not about analyzing all this is just representing what I become. So I was just naturally involved and I start to compete with six years old and a bracket with seven years old. So my first tournament, I lost. Hmm. And, my, and my father, very smart man. First, he asked me if I want to go and compete and said, yes, that I want to compete. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, great. And I don't have a six-year-old bracket. It's just started seven. So he said to me, okay, you want to compete? Great. If you win the tournament, I give you a gift. If you lose the tournament, I give you two gifts. With this, he, sa he said to me in, in between lines, if I lose, he's not going to get upset. Because I could not understand why he's going to give me two gifts if I lose. Right. I just know... He will be happier with me if I lose somehow. It's not going to be bad for me if I lose. So, of course, I'm not going in the tournament thinking about losing. But I have my father's backup saying, if you lose, it's okay. So, and I lost. And uh, I don't even remember if he gave me two gifts or not. But the point <laughs> was, my dad was not upset with me. Sometimes a father who has very much love for the, the surf or for the... the, the soccer or for the jiu-jitsu and then he put his kid and he see his kid with the ability to become good but the kid miss a goal miss a score something said why are you missing oh man you should do so the kid feels like for i disappoint my father my father is bad, sad with me because i didn't score i didn't so the, this kind of charging or, or, or asking for the kid for him to perform well Sometimes it's, it's a disappointing thing because the kid could not fulfill the father's expectation. And that becomes a sad thing for the kid. Oh, I don't want to so play soccer anymore because my, my dad gets sad if I don't. So right. those things never happened with me. For me, it was just winning is great. Losing doesn't matter. It's great too. So let's keep going because you are great. You are... So this was inspired me to keep going. And from that loss, from six years old, until 14 years old, I was a winning straight. 
And then I lost one more time on 14 years old. And then as another winning straight up today. <laughs> so, that's, that's quite the winning streak. <laughs> yes. It's a, it's a very, I mean, but I just count in my, my victories after 18 years old where I get my black belt. Do you feel and like, was, yes, I was going to ask, it sounds like your father did a great job in managing the expectations of you and the family name. Do you feel like there was any uh, external pressure that, caused you to perform inferior? And if that was the case, how did you drown that out and overcome that? Depending how you feel supported, that external pressure becomes valuable because like I did with my son Kron or like I was feeling, the kids who are going to compete against me, they're going to compete against Elias Gracie's son. Mm. Right. So what's, what's bad for me because I expect him to win, but what's bad for them too because they know they're going to fight somebody who's bringing a tradition on her back. So even their teachers, they're going to say, oh, you're going to fight Hickson Gracie, but that's okay. You're going to win. So whatever it is, I, I, I carry a name which helped me in a way and also put pressure in another way. So it's, there's a balance there of negative and positive elements. And depending how your father handled this with you as a coach, as a father, as a friend, as a supporter, you're going to feel like whatever it happened with me, I'm in a mission to achieve for life. And different than whatever happened to me can change my way to think or can maybe uh, put a turmoil in my ideas because I'm not sure. I'm not sure if I trust my dad. So if things get in, in a wrong direction, Everything can be jeopardizing my, my mission. But mm. my father was not only a general. He was a friend. He was a, uh, you know, so he was a very special guy because different than a tyrant who has his followers based on fear, he was a leader who let, had to take people behind him based on love. Mm. We love what we are. You know, we respect. We, so my life was eating well and a proper diet. We have a special diet to eat. I go to parties in my friend's house. I don't drink Coca-Colas. I don't take chocolates. I don't take hot dogs. So sometimes I take my own, my own uh, uh, lunch bag. So it was always, I was always feel like the family was not exactly equal to everybody. We are special. We are eating different. We're training different. We're preparing ourselves for a different kind of challenge. And, uh, and we're expecting any kind of rules. We are accepting no gi, with gi, with punches, with elbows, head butts, no, no mouthpieces, no, no cups. So no time. So it's, it's kind of crazy. But when you start to get in this environment, this becomes normal. And, and then you become a, a different breed of person. You're just not exactly thinking like other people, not being scared of other things like other people, not feel like... Uh, because somehow you have to accept in a very early age the possibility to get really serious hurt. Right. Or, to really, or really die. And my father was always a spiritual guy. He always believed in reincarnation. He always believed our lives transcends this kind of material life and goes to spiritual and then go back to life. Hmm. So we're not exactly afraid of dying or afraid to try things which lead you to a possibly death. Accepting death is part of the, 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 the I feel like, a spiritual law, you know, you, you accept life. Why are you not going to accept death with the same naturality? You know, it's just your ego in between. Oh, I cannot die now. I have things to do. I have money on the bank to spend. So I, now I'm in a position I cannot put myself at risk. And then I become conform based on what I have. And I don't want to try anything else because now I have my house. If I divorce, I will lose my house. So I'm going to keep a bad marriage just because I want to keep... So people sometimes make bad decisions based on conformity, based on not putting themselves at risk. And for us, be at risk was part of life since I understand myself for, for, for a person, you know. And, and, and sometimes fear takes you from, from not from, live, from dying, but take you from living. Mm. So if you're, 
sometimes you're too afraid of, of, of dying. You not try anything, so you're not living either. You 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 dying alive, you know. So those those situations make you feel like putting everything in perspective. And for me, it's just worth it when you put yourself fully connected to the mission. If you just halfway, it's it's okay, you know. It's it's good enough. It's just you know, okay, no matter. For me, everything matters a lot. And especially now in that phase of my life, uh, I, because before that, I always, if you imagine a triangle, I always work towards the tip of the triangle, focus on my efficiency, my competitiveness, preparing my students, myself to compete in the highest level. Right now, I change my focus, not only to, not to keep performing and, and, and excelling in terms of efficiency, because... I'm an old guy right now. So I try to just create a more solid base and working on the side, on the basic side of the triangle to increase more people who has no ability to fight, no desire to fight, but they still need a lot to learn in terms of breathing, in terms of uh, visualization, in terms of empowerment, in terms of strategy, in terms of handle stress, in terms of... Uh, so many emotional, mental, and physical, because some part of jiu-jitsu doesn't, is not developed for you to learn how to kick ass, but it's devoted to you, for you to feel safe. Mm. Just, and an average person, if, if you teach them how to have base, for him to believe he, people cannot throw him on the ground, how to have deflections for people not hurting him on the punches or else, because defensive aspect is shorter, is more perfect than the offense. You can survive or not. You can survive much easier than can kick ass. Right. Got it. Okay. If I give you a perfect sense of defense, you may not gonna be aggressive. You may not gonna be a fighter, but you're gonna be sure you can survive in an emergency. And that sometimes can provide for you a very nice life because you're not a fighter. You just a. Uh, uh, a lawyer, or you're just a doctor. And if you get, if you add yourself as a doctor, this capability to, to feel like, okay, I know if I'm walking on the street and somebody tries to attack me, I have a chance against a knife, I have a chance against a bunch, a, a club or a punch. So you don't have to be sure, but you have to have an option. Right. Once you have that option, that's already increased your possibilities a huge amount. So for me now, my jiu-jitsu is to fulfill people's, is to fulfill the people who need the most, who are the most non-violent, more peaceful, and they need not only this kind of support, physical, but also mental and spiritual. And you know, as as you're talking about that, I think that desire to serve outward and serve the people you're talking about probably comes with a level of maturity, right? You're in that stage of life. But I still go back to what you were saying earlier about defending so heavily the, the I don't want to put words in your mouth. I would interpret it as honor, the family honor or the yeah. honor of the yeah. art. Do yeah. you still feel the same way that somebody who challenges either the family or the art deserves some of the things that you were talking about earlier? Or is it something that is more likely to roll off your back at this point? How has that changed? Yeah. Right now, change a little bit because we already proved to the world, for the four corners of the world, the factors of jiu-jitsu. Got it. Today, today, if you talk bad things about jiu-jitsu, it's because you either have a, a personal uh, problem with the family or personal problem somehow is, is, is you minus as a person than I expect because you cannot talk about you know, science. You cannot talk about you know, things which are showing benefits for everybody. How you can talk bad things about something like that? So jiu-jitsu for me is an is a expression of, of peacefulness, love, control, effectiveness. So all this is positive for anyone. So I don't believe people will talk in a good sense about, bad about jiu-jitsu. When they talk about the family, they also feel like either it's personal because they get beat by a Gracie member or sure. 
So they not they not can come if out of the blue and talk bad things about the family who helps so many people who who bring so many jobs to the world who who shared the knowledge and the and the and the effectiveness for so many people. So this cannot be bad. So with this being said, uh, my view of my let's suppose against those things is more like towards uh, is clarified for people which our mission is. It's become more like towards the the the, the, the aspect of teaching and, and revising and, and in, enforcing the, the, our mission because I'm I'm now don't have like the the concerns about proving myself right. right. I'm not Got there it. to just to just uh, restart everything and start to challenge people because now everybody who comes in the ring he's gonna come with some knowledge of jiu-jitsu even coming from a judo teacher who learned jiu-jitsu so jiu-jitsu is, so now it's not exactly a style against style now it's mixed martial arts is talking about it and and and, and this combines people who learn grappling as a base training and then start striking after and people start to strike in base and start grappling after jiu-jitsu, submission, wrestling. So now the, the, the mix is very is a huge mix, which I, I go more towards the, 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 the persona, the character, the, 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 the personality of the fighter, how he talks about other fighters, how he talks about what he's learning, how his mission is in life. And then I start to, to become more in alignment with somebody or say, oh, this guy's an asshole. He just don't know what he's saying and stuff. Mm. So, but I still like trying to follow my mission in terms of giving to the people what they feel like they need in order to excel in life. And jiu-jitsu is the platform for that. But what may gonna, he may going to use is more breathing. It's more like control emotions or be peaceful. So he can use that, those tools in a different ways to, to become a better well, I, you know, one of the things that you talked about earlier was as your, let's say you're fighting with an opponent and you're, you're dubbing it more of a challenge. And you said that you learn more about yourself. I've certainly found that to be true on my own path is that I've learned how I naturally and instinctively respond to threatening situations and have had to learn to breathe, have had to learn how to just relax, be critical, think about it. Don't be so, so emotional and get charged up. I mean, I was rolling with somebody the other day and I was able to submit this individual and I could tell that they were so pissed off and they came at me a hundred miles an hour. And rather than it serving them, I was able to choke them out again because they were irrational rather yeah. than keeping this level calm head that I, to a small degree have learned over the past two or three years. Yeah, definitely. I agree 100% with you. And, uh, and you put yourself, in, in, in eventually on this two years, G-Window, you put yourself in those kind of situations, like in the Sparks, you know, maybe once a week, maybe once a month, maybe a couple of times. A, a, so for me, it was 24 hours, 24-7. I could not think about a possibility to go out on the street and fight. You know, because... I put myself in a position where, you know, I, I'm ready. I put right. myself available. And, uh, and I could not accept some kind of challenge or to postpone or to leave for next month or to, or to create a, like a gossip through the, the me social media, which was inexistent at my time, and stay like just putting, you know, to let boiling and stuff. No, for me, it was things are resolved on the beach, on the garage, on the on the on the corner, whatever, and this, and it was not exactly for the big crowd or for social media. It was just for myself to prove I was right and my opponent. And then after either we shake hands or I leave him sleeping, but whatever it is, was something which make myself either explode or live with that new normal for me. And and and, and once you start to develop, when you start to need the, this kind of capabilities in a daily basis, you start to creating different rituals for yourself in terms mm. of how to read, not only when you fight, but when you sleep, when you wake, when you swim, when you, so what's the best way to hyperventilate to keep your mind fresh 
and visualizations all the time. Imagine myself going surf and then somebody coming on the beach and try to... So the possibilities to, to, to engage, the possibilities to be calm, the, are there all the time. There's no, there's no mark date. So that gives me a sense of working on my, on my attributes, on my p potential daily. It was not something I do is eventually. So I put myself as a, as a slave of my own desire to improve. And I have to be daily approaching my mental aspect, my spiritual aspect, how, how it was easy for me to accept that. So it's, for me, it seems like funny, but any, any mission I have during the, this time, if I have a fight today, I will up in the morning and say, thank you, my God, to be able to fight, to be able to represent my family. And if it's today, it's going to be my last day, so be it, you know. I will accept that as the most natural thing. Like a samurai and with the sword, I was thinking about, you know, the guys go fighting. They're not going to come. Some of them not going to come back, you know, but they still like right. keep, keeping clean, keeping honor, keeping uh, integrity until the very last time. So I was amazing about that aspect of the Japanese culture. And I bring this to my own ways. I don't have the sword, but I have my hands and my spirit, which is going to lead me to death if I have to follow my mission. So all those elements, with a 16, 18, 19 years old, it's not easy for anyone to start to thinking about how comfortable I'm supposed to be if I die today. You know? But that, for me, was something which is a tool for me to be used in order to cope with my, my life, which was very unusual for the time, too. So... At this point, I feel like blessed to be able to survive all this time. Also blessed to put myself 100% and in, in my, in my focus and my things I have to do. So I'm a very happy man. Well, you know, as, as I hear you talk, and, and I've been fortunate enough to have conversations with men like yourself and other extremely, extremely successful men, and there's one thing that these successful men, including yourself, don't do, and that's dabble. <laughs> yeah it's not like oh i'll try this thing i'll i'll experiment with this when when you go and this is what i think you're alluding to at least what i'm hearing is you're all in not as in like when i train i'm all in but this is life not just me on the mats a hundred percent i think like uh in any point in life no matter if it's financially physically mentally or spiritually you find a plateau based on your achievements, based on what desires to go, you find a plateau. And once you find this plateau, normally your brain said to you, okay, you get a good position here, let's settle, let's be mm -hmm. comfortable here because you already have done a lot. So if you put a risk, you can jeopardize in your whole situation. So your, your, your safety, your mind, your, protect you from making mistakes, so it's better to be conform in the situation you at. For me, I disagree with that. I feel like in any point in life, you just want to feel 100% alive if you're able to put at risk, if you're able to put everything again and again on the table to see, because that's exactly the, 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 the signification of being alive, is to be able to feel liveness by attempting things. If you're 18 years old and somebody asks you to go to China for a year, you go without blinking. You're going to go experimenting and go. If you're 50, you're going to say, but what are I going to do in China? Right. I don't know how to speak China, Chinese. I don't know how to. So what about the food? What about what I'm going to be? Is hotel is bad? So you start to creating problems because you're not in an age anymore to put at risk, to just go there and to disappoint it. Different than I, so I feel like, in order for you to keep your mind young and your heart strong in terms of motivation to be alive, you have to take all the chances and the opportunities life gave you. You cannot be afraid to try. So it's, it's completely interesting, the, the adaptations you have to do all the time. You know, Three years from now, I have a school. I have things going in me. And then COVID happened. The schools closed. Everything changes. And then I built up a studio like 
a studio for, for producing content. And I try to redo my life through the internet. Mm -hmm. Teaching, you know, I try to... Financially, I'm exactly have like... I'm making now a percentage of what I was, a small percentage of what I was doing physically. But I try to reinvent myself. I try to be present. I try to keep supporting. I try to keep my life motivated. I try to keep in my mission 100% focused and, and, and do my best. And if, if you ask me if I could do something different, the only thing I have to say is... Uh, I could go in a different direction, but if I go in the direction I am, I do in 110% of what I should do to keep myself, you know, motivated in a path if I'm going to be recognized, I'm going to get something back from me, I'm going to get another victory in my life. So I'm still on the mat, I'm still fighting, you know, I'm still winning, but with a different levels of expectations, hopes, you know, patience, and, 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 and other things. So pretty much is important for us to keep not in the conformity level side, but in the putting yourself at able, able to, to, to receive from life the fully recognition. You know, you have to put at risk, and then you're going to see life becomes more meaningful, things are going to be better because... You really try what you have to try. But when you're afraid to try, when you say, well, I'm not sure, you basically stop living fully and you start to living only on your expectations, on the situation you can handle. You know, it's not exactly what you want, but you know. And you stop living fully and you start to living just uh, partially in terms of life, you know, in terms of intensity, in terms of happiness, in terms of of, of conquering. Does this go into, cause I've heard you talk about your personal code of honor. Does this concept of risk and pursuit, even, you know, even despite that you've had so much success, is that part of your personal code of honor or is that something different? That's a little different because the code of honor gives you the sense of belonging a sense of what you can accept and what you cannot accept in your life in terms of, of, of representing, in terms of expecting from other people those kind of, you know, judgments or whatever. So you putting yourself honorably in a position to debate, to put yourself in a position of acceptance, of not acceptance of things. So it's not about how you perform or how you, you project yourself in terms of achieving something. Mm -hmm. you, can be, you can be honorable, and you can be passive. You know? So for me, my motivation in life is, diff, is a little separate from my honor. I have to create myself motivated based on what I have today in terms of how, what I can do. To, because a big part of, of my personal success in terms of how I fulfill my heart of love and, and peace and happiness, is to be at service. I learned in a very early age, I have a gold in my hand. Jiu-Jitsu is very, very valuable. And through Jiu-Jitsu, I can help people. I can really make a deep difference in people's lives, giving them more confidence, more sharpness, more tranquility, more, more, more strength more strategy. So I make the guy transform the, himself in a better, stronger person. So that service I get addicted for because life for me is a giving and taking. You cannot be only good. You know, you cannot just give, 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 give and not receiving because you become weak. Mm. You cannot just receive, receive, receive and not give enough and because it becomes like you're not a, you know, you're supposed not to be a needed person who needs everything for you and give nothing. So it's unbalanced too. Eventually, life's going to get on you. So the perfect way to live is to give and receive. It's a spiritual trade. You know, no matter if I give you jiu-jitsu and you give me money, no matter if you give you money and you give me food, no matter if you give me food and I give you jiu-jitsu, so no matter what kind of service, but if you're a good farmer 
you're going to love to give your, your, your chickens or your eggs to somebody to feed a family, to make, peop- to make people feel good about the chickens you sell. If I have jiu-jitsu, I have to feel good about my jiu-jitsu because that really can increase people's quality of life and happiness. So once you get addicted to that positiveness you give, you feel like that's a mission. I cannot just deny that mission and say, oh, I don't give nothing. I'm a doctor, but I don't want to treat nobody. That's you, mm-hmm. you, 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 you go away from the, the, your mission and becomes a failure. or, a, or I don't know what you become because I don't even think about it. But, but you're supposed to do a mission in life because giving, 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 and also receiving thank you, receiving money, receiving knowledge, receiving, you know, receiving. And then when I receive what I receive, I feel not only proud, but I feel also I deserve it. Mm. So, and that's the all balance smooths out because when I give a class, when I speak to you on this, I'm not saving words. I'm not trying to finish as soon as possible. I, I like to re- give a message for your, for your listeners about the best I can be. I'm here giving the best, the best information I can have in my brain just because I feel like that's my, de- my, 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 my mission. And I feel proud about that. So with all this, you know, we, we just have to keep living life and giving the best you have to be able to receive the best you can ask for. You know, the, the value, I think, of what, what you're saying here is from the outside looking in, you have the great blessing of having a father in your life who introduced you to something significant and valuable and meaningful very early on. And it sounds like you've pursued that your entire life. And yet I talk with a lot of men who say, I don't have a mission or I don't have a purpose or I don't know what it is. And what you're saying about service doesn't just pertain to what your mission is specifically with jujitsu, but with anything, whether it's farming or being a lawyer or a doctor, like you've alluded to during this conversation. Yes. Uh, I agree a hundred percent. And, uh, in regard to my father, I was start to helping my brother to, to teach classes, private classes with 14 years old or something. So, and then I asked my father said, dad, what I should do to be the best teacher I can be. Mm-hmm. And he told me, if you want to be a good jiu-jitsu teacher, you learn a good arm lock, a good sweep, a good escape from the mount position, and you make sure you know the details, and you show those details for the student. And then you're going to be a good teacher. But if you want to be an excellent teacher, you have to try to understand what the student needs to learn. Hmm. With this advice, you not know, make me... Uh, I, I, focus on being a good jiu-jitsu instructor, but also give me the focus to be a good psychologist because, <laughs> yeah. because you have to, you have to cap- capture what the guy show you in terms of if he's emotionally disturbed, if he's tense, if he's relaxed, if he's lazy. If, so I will approach the class for a lazy guy different than approach the guy for a very tense, emotional so it's not about what I'm gonna the, the technical information. It's about the approach. It's about hey man, relax, breathe. Let's talk. Let's move. don't be so active. Just be. And for the other one, okay, but be happy, be fast, lift your hands quick. So the approach will be different based on the understanding. So I follow my life from that point, always thinking about how I can serve with my jujitsu in a most most approachable and direct way. For each student, for each situation, the situations change. So this makes me feel like I'm on top of my game based on trying to be understandable about what he needs to learn. Because a woman needs something to learn from jiu-jitsu, which is not exactly against what the man needs, or a child needs, or an aggressive bully kid needs in terms of become peaceful and more gentle, or what the shy kid afraid needs or what's the, 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 the uncoordinated guy needs. Or, so it, everyone is different in terms of how they're going to approach, how they're going to take jiu-jitsu experience. And uh, with that, uh, it's just 
you know, the experiences that you'll be feeling and as you evolve in Jiu-Jitsu, you can get bad things, good things for yourself in terms of, you know, uh, a complete idea of performing and, and, and put Jiu-Jitsu in your life in a good way. So you, you've used a couple of terms a couple of times now. You've said uh, peaceful and uh, you've said uh, gentle. And from the outside looking in, somebody who's not familiar with jujitsu or you personally or what this art is about, I don't know that they would naturally make that association. Do you consider yourself to be this type of person? Have you always felt that you were gentle and peaceful? And then how do you explain and articulate for people that, that it is actually gentle, not this violent, you know, activity that most people see on television. Yeah. Martial arts is a violent thing because it's, it's, it's both fighting. It's a fight, but it's different ways to fight. You can fight aggressive with, you know, fist and punch somebody. You're going to fight a woman. You're going to, if you're aggressive and mean, you're going to fight a woman with a punch and you're going to kill the girl with two punches. So, or if you want to fight a woman who deserves to be controlled, if I want to ha somehow have to engage with a woman, I, first thing, I, I don't want to be aggressive or mean with her. I want to control her, make her go back to your, her senses. And immediately, soon she go back, I relieve because she don't need pain. She don't need brutality. She needs control. So with jiu-jitsu, I can be gentle as I want. Because I don't have to hit you. If you just learn how to strike somebody with the elbows and punches, you can be gentle by diminishing a few degrees the punch. But you, the only thing you do is punch. So you're going to hurt no matter what. Mm -hmm. But if you know how to control, how to weight distribution, how to choke, nothing can be more gentle against a crazy guy than put him to sleep. Right. Sure. If I keep choking after his sleep, I could kill him, which is very violent. But if I stop in the right point, can be very gentle for police officers. For, for I mean, I, I agree, jiu-jitsu is very gentle art. But depending who is fighting, against who, and what deserve, that's going to be the problem. Well, and, and, and not only that, but through your own capability and your work over your lifetime, it's allowed you to be able to have that restraint and control. Because if I'm an individual who gets into an altercation and I have no idea what I'm doing, all that I can rely on is my aggression and violence and just my inherent strength, no technical skill whatsoever to allow me to be gentle, to allow me to assess the situation from an objective standpoint. Yes, I agree a hundred percent. Yeah. It's a, it's a very, it's a very, it's been an, a very interesting journey for me and I've learned so much about myself and life and how it's translated. And I, I'm just, I'm, I'm excited to continue down the path because I know how much it makes, how, how good it makes me and how much it improves my life. Yes. The, the improvement is very, very much clear. When you start to engage and you start to feel uh, elements which are, you know, transcending the math because one important thing too is because I feel like the, the modern times dehumanizing you, the technology, the robotics, mm. the internet, they put you in a best image, the best social level, and you can interact with everybody, but it's hard, it becomes harder for you to shake hands, to look people in the eye, to negotiate, to, to talk with a girl, you know, because it becomes very much spacey and, and, and you can see the entire world by the, the, the phone. So jiu-jitsu, if it's for not other elements, they can humanize you because you start to hug, breathe together and feeling. So it's a great element also to, to make you rediscover yourself in a much more intimate way, which make you feel like regaining the animal elements we have and we need in order to feel complete. We're not just in our heads talking for the internet. We are persons, so this kind of connect you with your physicality, with your thinking together, thinking and doing and, and, and strategizing. So it's a very complete element in terms of keep you on your highest game. Yeah, that's, that's value. I mean, even, and not to mention just the physical connection, you know, we're energized from other people. 
So I, you know what, Hickson, I appreciate you joining. Um, I've got the copy here. I've read it, man, just an incredible, incredible story of your life. And I'm so honored to be able to have you on the podcast as, as we wind things down, uh, let the guys know where to connect with you. Obviously they can pick up a copy of the book, but where's, where's the best place to connect with you? At this point, the best place is Hickson.academy because I start to giving some information, which is very valuable for teachers, for students, for new students, for people who start to interact about what it is. So I feel like I can't wait for you to show, show up and, 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 and check the, the site. Okay. Well, well, we'll link everything up. We'll sync the guys with it. Let them know where to go. Again, I appreciate you. Thank you for imparting some of your wisdom with us today. It's a real honor, and I know the guys are going to get a lot of value from it. My pleasure, Ryan. Thank you. God bless my brother, and talk Thank to you, you soon, okay? Ciao, ciao.